This is Richard Wolf from Democracy at Work responding to another Ask Prof. Wolf question from our Patreon community. This one comes from Daniel Redifer. And Daniel responds, I believe, to comments I have been making over recent weeks to the effect that the notion that the only way to deal with an inflation is for your monetary authority or the Federal Reserve in our country's case to raise interest rates is at best unjust and at worst dishonest. In other words, raising interest rates is one way you can try to stop an inflation. It has been used in the past, sometimes successfully, sometimes not. But it is certainly not the only way. It shouldn't be presented as if it were the only way. It shouldn't be discussed in the United States as if it were the only way, with virtually no one pointing out the other ways that we know of. So I'm going to do that. And I've been doing it. And I want to do it again in response to Daniel Redifer's question, because he asks a really good one. If we have an alternative way, and he references wage price freezes, if that's an alternative, and it is, as I'll explain in a moment, well, then that might be not only an alternative to raising interest rates, but it might have problems of, his o- of its own. And Daniel says one of them is if you freeze wages, you're going to be freezing the incomes of millions of American workers that they have told us are inadequate to live on. That's why we're having the unionization drives, the strikes everywhere, the remarkable change in what it means to work at Amazon or Starbucks or all the other places being hit with efforts by workers to get a better shake. Wouldn't all of those be hurt or frustrated if we had a wage price freeze? Well, let's go back briefly and take a look. Wage price freeze is when the government simply says, as of a certain moment, no more increases in prices, no more increases in wages. You freeze them. Instead of talking about how it might work, let me tell you about how it did work here in the United States back in August of 1971. The then president, a conservative Republican named Richard Nixon, announced as follows. If any business in America, after tonight's speech by me, the president, if any business raises the price as of tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock, we will come for you, we will arrest you, and we will put you in jail. And if any worker or union does the same pushing up wages, we will do the same. In other words, the inflation has got to stop, which it did right away. It was a successful program, originally scheduled to last 90 days. It lasted longer, and it froze the inflation right out of the passageway. Many people credit it with the re-election of Mr. Nixon a short time later. So clearly, a wage price freeze is an alternative to raising interest rates. Shame on the Federal Reserve for not talking about it. Shame on Mr. Biden for not talking about it. Shame on the whole collection of Republicans and Democrats not talking about it. There is no excuse for that. But Daniel Redifer is right. If we have a wage price freeze, that solves the problem of inflation. But it does not solve the problem of inequality, of prices having gone up for many years, while wages have not kept up for many years, and particularly now. In fact, for many decades now, at least four, we have had a redistribution of wealth in the United States from the bottom and the middle to the top. That's why we talk about the 1% versus the 99%. And everybody listening and watching knows what I'm talking about because it's infused their lives too, and you can see it 
if you're not blind. So if you want to do something about the redistribution of wealth, if you think it has gone way too far, if you'd like to see it reversed, let's move some wealth from the top, from the people with the billions to the masses of Americans who really need it for their daily lives, well, then a wage price freeze is not what you want. And Daniel Redifer sees it and makes an, a, a proposal, if you like, in the form of a question. You could freeze prices, but not freeze wages. Let them be pushed up as far as workers can achieve that then you would be able to stop the inflation because prices couldn't go up and accomplish a second different objective, which is to redistribute wealth from the top. Because remember, the people who set prices are the employers and they are the ones with the wealth and the power in this country, in this capitalist system. So if you had a price freeze, but not a wage freeze, that would be one way to undo the redistribution or to reverse it, if you like, that we've had for the last 40 to 50 years. That would be a perfectly reasonable way to proceed. Daniel Redifer is right. But let me add a caution. We should never allow this system to put those of us that see it for what it is into the position of choosing between this way of redistributing wealth and that way. The reason is we shouldn't be fighting one another in society over redistributing one way or the other. We shouldn't need to redistribute wealth because it shouldn't be distributed unequally and unfairly in the first place. No reasonable person would object if we decided democratically that some jobs require more education, some jobs are more difficult, some jobs nobody wants to do, and so we're going to compensate by paying those people a bit more than we pay others, etc. Those kinds of differences are easy to work out and easy for people to understand and accept. What's not easy is to have a difference between uh, an Elon Musk with 200 billion and people who cannot buy food for their children. For that, we need a different economic system that distributes much less unequally, and then we won't have to fight each other over this method of redistribution or that one, a progressive tax system or a wage price freeze that doesn't freeze wages and the many other options. That's the more radical, but also the more sensible way to deal with the kinds of gross inequality that capitalism has imposed on all of us. If these kinds of interventions strike you as valuable, please partner with us. Share this video with friends, relatives, co-op, workers, you name it. It's a way of extending the reach of all that we do. And if you can help financially sustain this project, that too will be enormously appreciated. Thank you.